is Wednesday, and you know what that means. Coming up in just a moment, we talk Kings and the NBA with Jerry Reynolds. And holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. And hippity hop right to that barbershop. How are you, Jerry? Hey, I couldn't be better. You know, I'm just uh, thrilled to be back talking to you 100% after my COVID experience. And, uh, you know, senior warrior again. Yeah, so the, the fourth shot really didn't do anything for you, huh, Jerry? Well, if it did, it just made things uh, a little <laughs> milder. That's all I can say. So, you know, at some point, I don't know how many shots you're supposed to take, but I think I've had about all I need. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's first of all talk about what happened in the Golden State game on Monday. First of all, I thought it was the, probably the most complete game that the Kings have played, and they got beat by a freaking superstar in Steph Curry. I mean, I thought the Kings, for the most part, played very well. Yeah, you can always point to a couple of minutes, but – uh, Steph Curry, Steph Curry, what are you going to do, you know? Yeah, he was great. I mean, really. Uh, I, I mean, I've said, if you just looked at that game and didn't know which team had won a championship the year before, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I really think, you know, if you could just, not that you could, take De'Aaron Fox off the Kings, take Curry off the Warriors, and the Kings are the more talented team uh -huh. that you watched. Now, uh that's just that. I mean, Curry is on the team and, and there's nobody, <laughs> there's nobody that can shoot the ball in the history of right. the game like that guy. And he had his game and, and, you know, and certainly I thought the Kings had a great chance to, to win. Uh, I thought they fought a pretty tough whistle most of the night mm -hmm. uh, and partly due to, you know, uh, the star power, star power. It's always been that way. And uh, uh, so, so there's that, but uh, there's reason I think to be somewhat optimistic. I mean, I really do. I, I know one thing I'll say this about this, this team, they're the most fun to watch that I've seen uh, for the last several years. You, you know, I mean, I think you'd go back to the early part of the season with Dave Yeager. Uh, the last time you really saw a team that was, that you could get into and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Well, you talked about the whistle, uh, Listen, I know it's always been a part of the game, and I get that. But just look at the last week alone. The second game of this road trip in Miami, Tyler Hero took four steps. It's not called. In real time, Mike Brown, you can see at the top of the screen, was clearly signaling traveling as it was going on. Two nights later in the Portland Phoenix game, Jeremy Grant takes an inbound pass, is backpedaling, catches the ball, takes five steps, makes a game-winning shot, no call. The other night, Clay Thompson clearly – Maybe not only once, but twice, fouled, hurt her, and there's no whistle. And so I don't know if he goes to the free throw line and makes them all, and the game goes to overtime. I just don't recall so many missed non calls on the last play of a game. It's unbelievable to me, Jerry. It really is. It really is. I mean, especially since there's such an emphasis on it. And I mean, you, it does just seem like the. I mean, we've always known that the officials want to let the players decide the game. And I think we all get that to a point. But a clear rules violation yep. <laughs> needs to be called. And as you say, uh, you know, when it's a clear travel or a clear foul, I mean, I was almost as surprised that they didn't make that call as I was surprised that Clay Thompson fouled him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Clay, Clay, I, I just really, it's hard to, to watch Clay now. You know, he's just not no. Clay anymore. Right. And uh, that was a terrible play on his part, but he got by with it. And so, yeah, you know, you, you hope these things even out, but but I, I don't think they ever have. I always say that that the, the star players and star teams have always got a little bit of a break. And I know the Kings in years when they were really good, I thought got breaks at times, except when they were against 
another star team, maybe from the South, but, uh, but for the most part, that's kind of how it's worked. I mean, the trick is to get one of those guys on your side. Uh, Jeff asked, what did you think about Mike Brown's post-game comments that the ref swallowed the whistle again? I think he was 100% right. Uh, you know, I, I, I have no problem with uh, coach Brown saying what he said. It was the truth. And, uh, and, you know, you can't say it cost the team the game because it would have been overtime. Yep. And, you know, and I mean, that same way that's in correct. Miami. So, so, I mean, I always think, you know, it's you never want to make make more of it than really what was because the home team still has an advantage in overtime and always has. Uh, but but still, yeah, they, they, they missed that call, and, and it's a shame. And, you know, and that Herder would have had to make three straight free throws to get it to overtime. We don't – you can't <laughs> automatically count that either. But uh, I, I thought I thought the whistle was a little bit biased uh, all the way through, and I mean they missed calls against uh, the Kings got by at a couple plays too. But but I think overall that uh, that's the first time I can really say that was I thought the real advantage to uh, the home team there. All right, so the Kings go two and two on the road trip, and Jerry they always say if you can go five hundred on the road, you'll take it. Uh, I think in reality, before the Kings got on the airplane to go to Charlotte. If somebody had said, "Hey, would you go two and two, would you take two and two and not get on the plane and make the trip?" I would have said, "Yeah, I'll take that." So you know, the big picture is that uh, two and two you'll take. I got to tell you though, Jared, let's take the Warriors game out of it for a minute. Those first three games is such a Jekyll and Hyde team again. The, the lack of consistency: one bad half, one good half, one horrible half, one great half. It's very puzzling to me. Yeah, it is, and I think that's that's. Uh... Really what Coach Brown has got to get through here in the next, I think, 10 games to to have some idea if this can be a good team because I think he's still struggling uh, in my mind, and I understand it, you know, finding out just who's my best starting five, who are my best reserves, uh, how do I I do a few things. I know I just, you know, I I second guess like every fan, and, you know, I'm at the mind that, uh, you know, it it may be time to start a different unit. you know, make, um, I think Harrison Barnes maybe should be a six man. It should be time for maybe him to be a, a key six man and give some leadership to the second unit. And I would start Monk and Fox and Herter and, 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 uh, Keegan Murray and, and Demonis or Sabonis. And, and I think that, and then adjust from there. And then, you know, I'll continue to second guess. It's like Holmes has not been effective at all. Right. But I think, if you're going to play him, and you really probably should play him because we know he's good. He yes. just hasn't been good the way they're playing. But I I think with the second unit, uh, play pick and roll with him. You know, he and Davion Mitchell, uh, you know, he he's not Sabonis. You can't play the same way. But if he, he's going to play 15 minutes, uh, uh, you know, try to get about six or seven pick and roll, uh, high pick and roll situations with a guy. Uh, I mean, he, he proved he can do that and might get – the rest of his game going. And, and I think, you know, we, we know he can play. He's shown that, but right now he's not. It's just like Harrison Barnes has been a really good player, but he's not near the same player. Uh, but I don't think you, but I do think in a six man role, uh, he's a pro. Uh, it might pick his game back up. And, uh, but I think going back, I, I still think your best five is your best five. And, and the thing that the Kings can do best is score. And you, you got some guys, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be undersized at times, but like the Warriors were last year, yep. but you can switch about everything, and you got a bunch of guys that can, can shoot the ball in the basket. Harrison Barnes, to me, nine games is a, is a decent enough sample size. I don't know if it's a, enough of a sample size to evaluate a team. I still want to see a team play 20 games before I get a real good read on them. But as a veteran, for somebody that, you know, you and I have both watched Harrison Barnes play a lot of games, he just doesn't look like the same player. No, he doesn't. I mean, he's just too good a player to be playing like he is. And and that's why – and and it's also true. He's, he is at the age where you're not looking for him to get a lot better. So there is a point where – you may want to say, we're not going to give up on you. We're going to play you a lot of minutes because we know you're good, but we might want to try some different things with you. More as a, a maybe, like say, off the bench to where you can give big minutes as a backup three, backup four, stretch four. And uh, and hopefully he can get get back. And I think, he, I think he's professional enough that he could handle that. You know, you look down through the years, uh, hey, just, just across there with the Warriors, Andre Iguodala, when he came to the – 
to the Warriors. There's a mm -hmm. guy, you know, you, you put him in a, in, in a bench role, God been a key guy. And uh, he was very, very productive. It extended his career. And, and I think that may be, may be time to look at that. All right. So um, you like the smaller starting lineup. We talk about the size. Like you look at Orlando, who had a lot of size, and they gave Sacramento fits. How do you combat a team with a lineup like that? You, you still, you just plain and simple, it's not going to be a defensive game. Just go out and flat out try to outscore them. That's what he boils down to. Well, I, th I think you, I think you might have to make some adjustments. Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I think in a game like that, uh, you know, you maybe a Trey Lyles plays more. You've got some guys, uh, you know, that Barnes plays more. I mean, you you can get a little more size out there if you need it. Now, having said that, I, I you know, the Kings did win that game. Certainly, size was hurt them, but mm -hmm. but uh, it also it was a tough matchup for them. And you know, the Kings were able to get good shots, and and certainly. Uh, you know, they went on the road and won it. It's certainly a desperation, kind of lucky shot there by by Fox, but give him credit. But they did win the game. So, yeah, there, there's times it just it would be a tough matchup. But then again, I, like I've said, it, you look at the, the last year's world champions. Uh, they weren't bigger than anybody. That's a good uh, point. You know, all they had to – you know, all you really have to do, I've always said that the idea of size is to get more rebounds. Mm -hmm. And the reason you want more rebounds is so you can get more shots and team that gets, you know, so, but if you can get more shots without getting more rebounds, I force turnovers, be quicker, uh, get the game off the board, things of that nature. It, it's the same. Yep. And so there's different ways of doing it. And like I say, we, we saw the Warriors do it, uh, you know, the Bucks, the, the year before, I mean, they're, they're certainly not the biggest team uh, when it really got in many cases, they played with the exception of Adetta Kupo. They were pretty, pretty average sized. Good point. And, and of course, having that one great player. So I don't know. I, I, I don't think it'd be the answer to all your problems at all. I, I just think, I guess I'm old fashioned. I still, still kind of believe in the old John Wooden theory. If you're not sure what to do, get your best players on the floor. Isaac has <laughs> Harrison Barnes scored most of his points last year when he gets the ball in the post and, uh, getting his game started from there. They don't use him much there this season. Thoughts? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, uh, Harrison is a guy that can play in the post, but he probably, uh, next to Sabonis, is their best post-up player. And, and I think if you're going to, there again, I think that's where he could be more effective off the bench because uh, you'd be playing with a different lineup and you could go to him more uh, as a post player. Uh, so, uh, but that's a great, I mean, that's a great analogy there. I mean, there's no doubt that, that Harrison probably needs to be in the post more. And, 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 and if they choose to keep starting him, they probably mm -hmm. need with Sabonis high, really play a little more high, low action, get, get Harrison Barnes in low. Obviously Sabonis can, is a great uh, feeder. So, you know, uh, but I think that's all, you know, that's just all part of the process here. And as, as you alluded, alluded to earlier, I'm on board you know, 20 games will tell us if this team can get it right. Right. Uh, you know, you, you if, if they're not a better team in, at 20 and they haven't gotten their roster kind of straightened out and Coach Brown knows who he wants to play and start and that sort of thing, that by then, then you're probably not going to. All right. Uh, somebody said uh, thoughts on a possible boogie reunion with the Kings. Uh, I'll respond to that first. There is a reason why he's not on a roster. That's number one. And number two, uh, if you remember – last year when Michael Malone and the reunion with DeMarcus and all the positive comments from Michael Malone, uh, why isn't DeMarcus on the Nuggets this year? Why is it that nobody has him on the roster? It's very simple. All right. I, I think his NBA career is over. That's my opinion. Well, I, I, the one thing I do think would be very concerning to me is, uh, you know, He's been on the Warriors. They didn't ask him back. Uh, he's been on the Clippers. They didn't ask him back. Uh, certainly in, you know, the Nuggets, uh, obviously Mike Malone, uh, you know, they didn't ask him back. And, and at some point you have to ask yourself, why is that? When, when several of those teams, uh, the Lakers, another one, that certainly needs talent, and they haven't asked him back. Yeah, I don't think you have knowledge. to ask yourself so, that. I think you know the answer to that. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, and, and so <laughs> I mean, really, you, just you can't you can't live in a vacuum. 
I no. Mean, <laughs> no, you can't. The reason why I think we're getting uh, people is Carmichael Dave uh, put out a tweet earlier today about DeMarcus being a solution for the Kings issues down low in it. That that's not, that's not the solution. It's just not. So I don't see that happening. I really don't. Well, and especially a team, you know, maybe there may be teams he could help more. I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. say that. I don't know. I don't know all the circumstances, but for a team that really is still weak defensively, Mm -hmm. and still not nearly good enough defensively and don't protect the basket nearly enough. DeMarcus has never been that. No. Uh, and so, you know, and certainly his transition defense has always been an issue. It's terrible. When he was healthy, it, it, when he was at his best, it was an mm -hmm. issue. And so, uh, you know, if this team were a Boston Celtics team and they thought mentally and physically, chemistry-wise, he'd fit in, I mean, they took Blake Griffin, you know, as – I mean, I could see them if they felt he was a better fit for him than Blake. That type of thing, I'd understand that because they they could, you know, they're a team that could take care of or use a talented guy that maybe is past his prime and not very good defensively. But uh, but they chose a Blake Griffin. All right, let's talk about the game tonight. A very good team is in. I'll tell you, Cleveland is a team that I think could win the East. I like their roster. They're off to a good start. They're eight and two. They're coming off a loss, so that's you know, keep that in mind. And they really, I, I looked at their points allowed per game. They're one of the very best in the league in that department. So they, they, they don't make it easy to score on you. This is going to be uh, an intriguing game to me. And I'll tell you why I say intriguing. Sacramento now has found themselves a three and six and the West is very deep. As you and I both know, there were two things that you and I talked about when we were doing the games together, and I'm going in a roundabout way, but I want to make two points here. Since the Kings have moved out of Arco Arena, Golden One has not been a home court advantage. And I also realize the team hasn't been very good. But even with that said, the Kings should be winning more games, in my opinion, on their home floor. And so you have that number one to try to get that going because you're one and three at home and you have a very good team and you could kill two birds with one stone tonight. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, Cleveland is – Really, they're they're one of the three or four best teams in this league. I've watched them several games, and boy, they uh, when they're healthy, you know, with uh, Donovan Mitchell and Dar Darius Garland, I, I don't know oh, if there's boy. a better backcourt in the league. Right, and uh, you know, and certainly with Mobley and and you know, I mean, Kevin Love off the bench it can still really play and mm -hmm. shoot and all that. You know, they're a they're a contender. Uh, they're a legit contender. Uh, so it'll be a real challenge. Boy, I sure do agree with your, your assessment, though, of the home court advantage because uh, you've got to win more games at home. But I will say this. Old Arco was a better – as far as a place to play with an advantage, it was a better advantage. I mean, no the question. fans were close, closer to the floor, more intimidating uh, to the officials, to to the, the, the visiting play. I really believe that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so there's – you know, that's just part of the deal. You know, I think that uh, it, if, the, you know, if the Kings were among the elite teams, maybe that would change. But but certainly as a team has been trying to find a way to win consistently, probably don't have the home court advantage they once had, even with weak teams. All right. Uh, if you want to hit up on the chat line, you can do so. K Kings definitely need a shot blocker. Hey, uh, how would you feel about adding Dwight Howard? I think I read he's going overseas to play. So, uh, I don't yeah, think yeah, I think he just happen. signed a deal yeah. overseas. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, they need, they could use the shot blocker that, that's, yeah, no that question. True. Yeah. Uh, that is true. And it's just be a matter of, of how you get one, uh, that could they, help. They don't you. grow on trees. Do they, those shot blockers, you don't just go out to your front. <laughs> no, yard they and really don't. Play and, for us. And, right. and I mean, if that's all they do, then that doesn't help you much either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you got a right. guy, yeah, he can block a couple of shots a game, and and that's well, that's really not enough because that's probably the over, right. most overrated stat there is because you you don't automatically get the shots back that you block anyway. Yeah, you had so, a guy, uh, in your, you, you you had a guy on your team when you were coaching that could uh, block shots. His name was Ralph Sampson. The problem was he couldn't run to the other end of the floor, <laughs> and if he was on the other end of the floor, he couldn't run back to get in position to block a shot. But if he happened to be standing near the basket, he could block a shot. Yeah, but it wasn't really going to help would, you. If they'd bring the ball right to him, he'd smack it. But uh, 
Uh, you know, the we actually there was a time when we did have a guy, John Oldham, who was a oh, yeah. terrific shot blocker. Yeah. Now, yeah. the flaw there was he really couldn't do much else. That's correct. <laughs> you know that it was a, uh, it was like okay, he can make some great blocks, but that's not enough. I mean, you might as well say, how would you like to have Dwayne Coswell black? He has he he blocked an awful lot of shots for Kings as well as the Miami Heat, but he really wasn't an effective all around player. So. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to dodge the question. I really think this team could use a guy who could block more shots, but not at the expense of somebody who's actually a better player. Right. You know, I you mean, know. you still you, are... you still want somebody who, yes, maybe can't block a, a couple of shots, but might actually make a couple of shots or make can make a couple of passes or do a few other things. Unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right, so... The, the West, you know, we talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I know we need 20 games, but I'm kind of believe I'm kind of starting to think that Jazz already are for real. They're already, they've already played over 10 games. I don't know if I need to see the Jazz play 20 games. I don't think they're going anywhere. I'm not saying they're going to be the number one seed or the number two seed, but I don't think they're going to fall off the map. I really don't. I don't either. I don't see them falling out of the top eight, and that's what we're no, talking about. That's right. So, uh, you know, no, I look at the standings every day, you know, and you, you see certainly – the Rockets and the Lakers right now are behind the Kings. That's it. Uh, yep. But even though Oklahoma City Thunder, I don't, I really don't believe they're as good as the Kings, but they're currently ahead. Now I think that may take care of itself. But now, but when you look at all the rest of the teams, I mean, obviously, the Clippers have been struggling. If by some miracle, uh, Kawhi Leonard plays someday at some yep. level, yep. I don't know if that'll happen. Of course. Uh, by the way, I. I'm not like you. I read hoops hype every day, and they always have a lot of list of, of the guys that are injured. I think they got that wrong. They need to start having a list of the guys who are going to play. Good point. Uh, you know, that might be a shorter list. Say for <laughs> those fans who are going to a game, Joe Faduzel and Elmer Fudd, they're actually going to play tonight. Uh, you know, so I, I'm, oh I'm, my really, God. I'm, I'm really getting down on this stuff. I'll tell you. I'm with you. You know, guys, uh, he can't go tonight. He's got a sore leg. He can't go uh, tonight. He, he bruised toe. Uh, Jesus. Unbelievable. Uh, somebody wants to know if I'll be having my uh, golf tournament coming up this year and how long before we get you back on the radio. Well, the uh, first part is I don't have any plans currently to have a golf tournament in the spring. I may have one at the end of the summer. I will keep you posted on that. That's number one. Uh, as far as getting me back on the radio, it uh, depends if somebody has money that they want to pay me. Uh, and third, uh, I do a show every day on Listen app, which is like radio, and you can download it, whether you're on the Apple device, Android. Uh, you can download the device. I do it every day at 4 o'clock Pacific, and it's basically like radio. It's just uh, over the Internet. So, Maybe you can join me there, and uh, if you have joined me and you continue to do so, I really appreciate your support, and if not, I'm on every day uh, at 4 o'clock Pacific. But, you know, it's like Jerry. You know, Jerry's enjoying his retirement right now, but, you know, I think if somebody, you know, knocked on Jerry's door with a very large Brinks truck out in his driveway and said, you know, we, we'd, we'd really like to talk to you about maybe – you know, appearing on this or doing this, I don't think Jerry would shut the door in his, in their face. You know what I mean? I just yeah, don't. Yeah, it's, you know, it's an amazing thing. You know, the old saying, follow the money. Yeah, follow the money. <laughs> I, I mean, there, there's things, you know, I wouldn't do for even a lot of money if somebody said, I, you know, we need you 10 hours a day, five days a week, and we'll give you X number. I, I don't care what it would be. I'd say, no, no, I can't do it. Don't right. want to do it. But, you know, little, you know, if you want to, you know, Jerry man can, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I've been, I've sold out before, so I can still sell out, I guess. So I yeah. guess that'd be the answer to that. By the way, I just got to tell you, I enjoy your, your uh, takes after post game show a lot. Thank you ran. I think fans really, if they're not aware of that, ought to do that because I uh, get some good information. And uh, well, so. you'll have to, you'll have to join me one night uh, when I do a post game. If it's not, you know, past your bedtime, maybe I have to wait until the team goes uh, to the East coast again, or, you know, in the central time zone. But I, I did it the other night after the Warriors game and we had a lot of people on the stream, had a lot of people watching on uh, Twitter and had a lot of positive comments and I'm going to be doing it again tonight. So we'll, we'll have to get you on there one night. 
Yeah, well, it'd have to be on the East Coast swing because it ain't gonna be. You know, <laughs> no, yeah. So there again, that's that's one of those deals that no, I've, I've got my routine in the evening. Yeah, I know, I understand. But that's uh, why I haven't. That's why I haven't asked you. Jeff says, uh, let them know that I take live calls on my Listen App show. Yes, I do. Uh, I really enjoy that, and uh, we we have a lot of fun. And on Wednesdays, coming up right after this show, I have a uh, every Wednesday's open forum Wednesday, so we can talk about uh, whatever you want. I'm just praying I don't get any political calls today after the election i'm just oh, praying. Yeah. Uh, but 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 it is open forum wednesday and we can go uh in any direction that you want all right so we're getting a couple of questions uh regarding deer and fox and we're getting so many comments that it's, it's sometimes i'm missing your messages that came in about deer and fox being an all-star i think through nine games yes but i think it's kind of silly to talk about all-stars and rookie of the years when we're only in the second week of November. Let's please at least get towards the new year. I think let, let's get 40 games in, all right, uh, for for Rookie of the Year and postseason awards. And for an all-star, let's get into December. All right, let, let's get it. Let's get 20 games in, 25 games. I, I, but right now, yeah, if, I mean, if you were telling me they were going to name an all-star after nine games, I'd have to consider him, yes. You know, the, the thing I've said about De'Aaron, and I think he's just, Obviously, I think he's playing at an all-star level. To me, uh, the way I looked at it is, to me, he always should be playing kind of like he's playing now. In other words, he really is a scoring guard. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not a playmaker, and I wish people, you know, they keep thinking in terms of like he's John Stockton. No, he's a scorer who can make a play. He's more Donovan Mitchell that we'll see tonight. He's more like Donovan Mitchell, Bradley Beal. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you right now, he's better than Bradley Beal right now. Now, a lot of fans... East Coast people would not believe that statement, but I'm telling you, he is. He He's getting more done more efficiently and has really most of the last year as well. And I'm not knocking Bradley Beal. He's an all-star yeah. in the East. Uh, but I, I think his game has leveled off. And I But I, I think De'Aaron, if you want to compare him, to, compare him to Donovan Mitchell. Everybody mm -hmm. knows he's an all-star and he's playing as an all-star, but that's his game as well. They're guys who can make plays, but basically they're looking to score and score productively, and that's what they're doing. And that's uh, what you should do. Really, Demonis Sabonis is basically, he, he's the point guard. He's leading the team in assist. That ought to tell you tell you what you need to know. Good point right there. And this uh, question, thoughts on Fox improving his free throws and three-pointers? Well, I think that goes along to what Jerry's talking about. I think getting to the line is so important for him the other night. I think he was 10 of 12 from the free throw line. So get to the line and make your free throws, and that's been a real bright spot, no question about it. Yeah, and his uh, his three-point shot looks looks terrific. You know, I think the percentage will stay up there. I'm not – you know, he's not the second coming of a Curry or anything, but, but I think he's extremely – efficient there and that of course opens up his ability to get to the basket especially those little 12 15 footers i mean you can see defenders are scared to death of him they, mm -hmm. they back up because they know how quick he is and they're giving him those shots and he's taking them and then uh of course eventually he, he gets gets the foul line too and making his foul shot so uh you know all the criticism that i've had of uh darren in the past in the past is to me, it, it's none of it's justified now. I mean, yep. he's playing more aggressive defensively and been a factor on defense in some, some games, as well as highly productive offensively. So is he an all-star? You know, if the team wins more and he plays like this, he yep. will be. Uh, somebody wants to know, uh, I have a question. What is the secret to Gary Gerald's uh, stamina? Well, first of all, he works out every day. Uh, he does exercise on – I always see him at the gym. He's on the treadmill and he's doing all kinds of things. That's number one. Uh, you know, he also goes out for walks. He is always reading, keeps his mind sharp. You know, it's amazing some of the announcers that we have in the NBA, Gary Gerald being one of them. Al McCoy is still doing the Phoenix Suns and he's 88. All right, Jerry, think about that for a minute. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, especially, and as you know, uh, a radio, I mean, especially the G-Man doing it by himself. Uh, yep. Al McCoy bas basically, for the most part, has done it by himself. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's it's tough. I mean, and uh, those guys, two, two great examples of guys who just are marvelous talents. Uh, you know, especially how they, 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 they have to do games now from, you know, up in the up in they don't the have nosebleed areas where you, yep. I, I, I couldn't follow the game up well, there. Well, Al know? McCoy told me 
Uh, the last time I talked to Al in 2019, before the season was uh, halted because of the pandemic, told me that he actually had to stop going to do some games on the road because he flat out couldn't see the court. It was too far away, such as Madison Square Garden and some of the other venues. He said, I can't do it. He goes, and you know, and it really hurt Al. Al is, you know, I mean, think about it. It's been his whole life. And the fact that the relocation in the arenas has made it very, very difficult for some of these announcers to actually see the game. Yeah, you know, the, the obviously, the and sadly, the radio just isn't uh, given any preference at all anymore. And TV's moving that direction, or local TV is moving that direction as well. Yep. As as you know, when we last year or so we did games, more and more teams were putting us up. Yep. And uh, you know, the, the way I looked at it was I I just did the games through the monitor, to be honest. Uh, you know, which is what's the point? <laughs> but uh, well, at that point, I mean, you, I tried. You know, I tried. You, I tried to do the same thing, but the problem is, I had the Giants game on my monitor, so I had to well, actually you, watch the yeah, court, You know. <laughs> Yeah, you had two or three things to watch there. Where I was just trying to keep up with one and not doing very good at that. But uh, but then again, you know, hey, oh, I'll never forget the first time I uh, the producer brought a big monitor uh, down, and I said, Jerry, do you might have any problem if I'm watching the football game tonight while I'm doing the game? And you go, you go, no. But I mean, a couple times you would be trying to look at the replay or whatever, and I have this big monitor with the football game on, and you would just be shaking your head. I was be yeah, like, I was gonna say, I mean, you said. You, <laughs> First of all, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't know you think you were serious. You know, I thought, what, what the hell is he talking about? You know, going to sit there, we're trying to do the game, or I'm trying to do the game, keep up with it. You're, you're, you're going on like nothing's missing and watching the damn Giants. And I was like, holy cow, what have I got myself into? Here? <laughs> yeah, well, I, that, that's a good question. I, I don't know what the hell you got yourself into, but um, yeah, I was a little, uh, little different that way. All right, so back to <laughs> no, a lot different that way. Let's, uh, yeah, a lot different. <laughs> Uh, back to this game tonight. I mean, I, I expect the Cavaliers coming off a loss and being a very good team uh, to be an A game. I think the Cavaliers bring their A game tonight. So if Sacramento brings their A game, can the Kings – if a, a Sacramento A game and a Cleveland A game, could the Kings still win this game tonight if both teams play A games? No. Okay. No, the Cavs are better. Okay. Uh, if they're playing their best, they're, they're just better. Uh, and so really, you know, I think for the Kings, if they play their A, and that's all they can do is play their A game. And I, I mean, they'll have to play better to have a chance to win against the Cavs than they did against the, the, the Warriors because the Cavs are a better team than the Warriors mm -hmm. right now. Uh, three or four, but definitely it shows yep, up. Yeah, no question. And, and really more talented at this stage. The So, yeah, I I mean, it's going to be a tough go. And, and but. It, I guess the good news is that there's really not a lot of pressure on the Kings other than they want to win at home. But if you can beat Cleveland, then that also tells you that you're capable of beating anybody in the league. That's really. right. Great point. Uh, somebody asked, uh, do I think I would ever move back to Sacramento? Yeah, never say never. Uh, I'm keeping all options open. And so could I see myself moving back to Sacramento? Yeah, I, I love Sacramento, just like Jerry. I mean, Jerry and I, are you know you know we come from different backgrounds but if you st stop jerry somewhere outside of sacramento and someone doesn't know jerry and they go where are you from jerry's going to say sacramento when i get stopped and people go hey you know what's your background where are you from i go sacramento i mean i've lived in sacramento over half my life i consider it home even though i currently don't reside there yeah i could see myself back in sacramento i jerry you and i've always said this i mean i and I don't want to get into politics. There's a lot of things going on in California that I don't like. But in terms of living there and our lives there, I've had a great life in my 33 years in Sacramento. I have very few complaints. Yeah, that's the way I feel about it. Well, of course, we live in Roseville and Placer County. And, and so I, I think it's a great, hard to find a better place to live. You know, uh, uh, El Dorado County, uh, I know you lived in a long time. I mean, yep. obviously, it, it, these are great areas. And that's why they... They're growing so rapidly. They have mm -hmm. great places to live. And yep. uh, and so, you know, I, I, I couldn't see myself living anywhere else. You know, I always say I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be a born and raised a Hoosier, but I spent mo most of my life in California. Yeah, and, absolutely. And so, so by far the majority of my life in California. So, uh, you know, uh, the Indiana experience was a wonderful experience, but uh, I have no desire to go back no. and live there. 
it's just uh, just where I was born and raised and proud to be. But this is a better place to live in my mind. Isaac wants to know if you still have those $300 pair of pants that you bought in the hotel lobby in Memphis that one year, those gray slacks. Yeah, yeah those $286 pants. <laughs> and yes, I do have them. They're in a special place, a very special place. <laughs> and uh, I think, like I, like I said, that was supposed to be the, 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 the place where Elvis bought some of his clothes. That's thinking, right. That's that. right. Do you think Lansky brother guy, do you think I'm Elvis? Do I look like Elvis to you? You know, I mean, Elvis can pay $286 for a pair of pants. I, hey, here's yeah, boy, boy, I've thought about that a lot. Cause I, I swear yeah. I, if I had to over again, I don't wear warm up pants. Uh, well, here's to, the deal. You know, that's, that's the thing. So we're doing a game and, um, you said, hey, not only are they my dress pants, they're now my pajamas and they're my workout clothes. But I said, Jerry, I said, um, you know, you realize when we're on TV, no one really knows whether we even have pants on or shorts or what color our slacks are. I go, you could have just worn your jeans. You could have gone the hot rod Hunley look and, you know, had your nice, you know, blazer or suit with your shirt and tie and jeans. And it would have been perfectly fine and you would have saved yourself the money. And you were like, that's a good point. I yeah, but, but here, yeah, but here's the point. And I know you and I know yeah. Stephen Rose at the time and you guys would have, you wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't have, you would have jerked my chain. I know you would have, because I always remember the time I, I did the game in Chicago, I'd sprained my ankle real bad and, and had it and had to wear a gym shoe to get a, get a, something on my foot. And, <laughs> and, and I thought, well, you got, just don't show it. And the first damn thing you guys did was show my big fat foot, you know, yeah. and of course I was, you know, hey, I was playing hurt. You know what I'm saying? I'm bringing, yeah. I'm giving my A game even when I'm not 100. percent You know, so. And I think you had lost yeah. a, a tooth once in your, and you know, we were. We well, were... I lost four teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that was good though. You guys were treating me good then. I mean, yeah, you were like a hockey player. Teeth, huh? You were like, yeah, a, hockey like a hockey player. player. I didn't have my had a bridge broke, and I told. Pete or uh, uh, Stephen Rose not to show me up close, and he didn't. Thank goodness. Right. And uh, of course, it always well, frustrated me because I asked my wife. I said, "How did I sound without those?" She said, "Dear, I thought you sound better." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, that's what you get sometimes. Uh, hey, we always told our uh, director, "Hey, don't don't shoot us too close. Nobody wants to really see us up close." So we always try to, you know, give us. Get, Move the camera back, would you please? You yeah, the, yeah. High def did not help us, did it? <laughs> no, I said high, high def. I, no. I, I didn't need high definition. No, no, no. High def was not something that was advantageous for our broadcast careers. That's for sure. You know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, if people. If people were watching the broadcast uh, due to our looks, uh, the I think the crowd would have even been much smaller. So, so I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> they said that they should. Uh, put statues out in front of the golden one of you and Jerry epic. Well, they, there are birds do need a place to uh, hang out and uh, dump all over. So, you know, yeah, yeah, that might be a really good idea for, for all the birds to hang out in downtown Sacramento. Oh my gosh. So they got actually a nice, when I was walking by the arena the other day, uh, it was the first time that I actually saw the media entrance with the Jerry Reynolds media entrance. And I think that's great. I really, that was nice to see. I had not seen it before. Yeah, that was very, very nice and certainly uncalled for, I think. But, I mean, I really appreciate it. It was very nice. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things in 10 years, somebody might walk in there and say, you know, who's that old fart? And, uh, you know, but at least uh, they might ask somebody and somebody might remember. So it's it's yeah. all good. And But, uh, yeah, it's very nice. And, you know, I, of course, we've talked about this before. But in my mind, if they're going to put a statue to anybody, it ought to be Greg Lukenville. I agree. Uh, yep. You know, the, the, the Sacramento probably would still not have a major sports franchise. Uh, Great you know, point. I, 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 you know, gutsy guy. And certainly he and Joe Benvenuti uh, together just did some marvelous things at a time when, when Great they had point. no political, no political help at all. And, Great uh, point. You, and, you know, and then of course, once everything got done, all the Politicians want to take credit, naturally. <laughs> You're 100% correct. Well, on that note, uh, we'll talk to you next Wednesday. Got a couple games uh, between now and then, including tonight against Cleveland. So we'll see what uh, happens there. And that was a quick uh, 38 to 40 minutes, Jerry. I mean, I, yeah, I really by. enjoyed it. And, uh, yep. you know, if I got a minute just to take, I'd like to plug my uh, little podcast I do with uh, Whitey Gleason and the Phantom. You know, we sure. do one called The Old Fashioned Three. You can get it on YouTube and just three 
old guys sitting around talking about basketball and some of it makes sense. Most of it doesn't, but we, we just, you won't learn a lot, but it won't hurt you. When is you, that? You what what really days will are, not be harmed. What days do you do that with those? Tuesday guys? and Thursdays we do it. Yeah. At, at what time? But at, uh, well, we do it, we do it about 10, but it's, you know, we, it's not a live. Oh, okay. Deal. But we just you put can it find it on, on YouTube. YouTube and, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So All YouTube right. and Apple and I think a stitcher and a couple others. So, just okay. kind of getting started, but you Good. might enjoy it. And, and uh, you know, you don't get the, you know, the in-depth things you're going to get from Grand Napier. But, no, uh, of course you know, not. It's a little different. No, it's, of uh, course not. No, no, no. You know, no. They, they, you know we got to keep things in perspective. All right. All right you uh, have a good rest of the day, Jerry. Enjoy the game tonight. I will. And you, you I uh, hope you, uh, like I say, fans, if you get a chance to tune in to post game with, with Grant, it does a great job on that. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. You take care. Bye-bye. All right, good stuff from Jerry Reynolds. And uh, I want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by New Works Plumbing of Sacramento. Locally owned for over 20 years, New Works has a fix for you for your plumbing needs and repairs. Just go to newworksplumbing.com or sacserviceplumbing.com, either or. Or you can call the number on your screen. That's New Works Plumbing for all of your plumbing needs and repairs. Rhino in Sacktown. Ryan, how you doing, buddy? Good to have you on the show today. Thanks, Grant. Doing well. How about yourself? Doing good. Uh, Jerry and I were just kind of talking about it. Get your take tonight on the game. Uh, we thought yeah. the Kings played a fairly consistent game the other night. They'll need to do it again. Cavaliers are the real deal, and they're coming off a loss. So I think this is going to be a good game tonight. Yeah, I think it's being a great game, too. It's going to be a good test for the Kings defensively. Um, Cleveland is a great team. Uh, something a little bit about different about Cleveland is they do like to shoot in the mid range. Um, they don't take a ton of threes compared to a lot of the other teams in the NBA. Right. They still take their decent amount. Um, but uh, you know, that mid range defense, that's going to be big and they run a lot of pick and roll. So I think it's going to be exciting. The Kings got a little chip on their shoulder. They got screwed out of two games. So let's see how they come out. Well, and that's it. Let's see how they start this game coming off a road trip. And home court, as Jerry and I were just talking about, it's been frustrating to me, Ryan. I've never really, uh, and Jerry and I, we, we, we've we've tried to like really think about why is it that the Kings have been so bad at home since moving out of Arco? They're in a beautiful facility, and I don't really know what it is. I know the Kings haven't had really good teams since they moved out of Arco, but they didn't have good teams towards the last part of being at Arco, and they had very good crowds. So it's very puzzling to me. It really is. They should be better at home than they are. Yeah, they should be. Um, Grant, I don't want to say that some fans have been priced out, but, you know, it, it's have. expensive to, you know, go downtown. I mean, you know, when it was at Arco, you had the huge parking lot. You could get a Good King's point. Dog, hot dogs, nachos. Now everything's gourmet in there. You can still kind of get some yep. of the staples of a ball game, but um, it's a it's a different crowd. And, um, you know, as well as anybody, if the Kings were to make the playoffs or they start playing better – a king's fan and every night. whatever they have to be yep. there so um it's a little bit more corporate but uh yeah it'd be nice to see that come back and again jerry hit the nail on the head fans are not as close to the court um as they were at arco as well all right harrison barnes uh boy they really need him to get going i think that's uh, also part of three and six i think if harrison barnes could play the way he's accustomed to playing uh, that would be a huge help for this team and king and murray struggled a little bit I know there was a report, I can't remember by whom, uh, that he's struggling with some personal issues off the court. I don't know if that's true or not, but he didn't play very well on the road trip. So let's see how those two do tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We need both of them to step up for us. Um, I think that, you know, Harrison, he's had a little bit of a rough stretch. No points in the last game. That is yeah. concerning. So we do want to get him going. And I would love to see Harrison kind of be that vocal piece. I know that he's been more of a silent leader with his actions in the locker room and on the floor. But be that verbal piece out on the floor for the guys. Because he's, you know, it, the matchup's going to come down to the ones and the twos tonight. Those are the people that you're going to want to watch. Because Donovan Mitchell, he can absolutely oh light it up uh, yeah. just in a second. Um, and Levert, Garland, they're, they're all great players. So. That looks like a very good trade for both teams. I mean, both Cleveland and Utah and all the draft picks that the Jazz are going to get. Plus, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, they're playing very well. It's nice to see a deal that really has benefited both teams. Absolutely. And it's nice to see a small market team thriving without Le mm -hmm. LeBron. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. So um, it can give the Kings hope that they can do the same thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be an exciting game. Uh, my only worry about Cleveland tonight, other than them being a better team than the Kings, is because they do shoot a lot of mid-range shots and they don't settle for shots. They take the best shot is um, how their Sabonis is going to play defense. Is he going to come up and help? Is he going to play from behind? Because that could get him into foul trouble early. And we know he is subject to foul trouble. Has been well, that is going to be a, a, a big key in this game. I think you're spot on. And I made a, I did talk about this a little bit on my rant today. Ryan, let, let's pray to goodness that after the game tonight, we're not talking about another blown missed call at the end of the game or something that the officials did, because we're seeing that too often. And I talked about that with Jerry. And, you know, you talked about a chip on the shoulder. I mean, I, I would imagine they got to be furious, too, with what happened at the end of that game on Monday because they had just gotten screwed a couple of nights before in Miami. And so let, let's cross our fingers on that. I haven't even looked to see who the officials are, but enough's enough already. You know, I'm going to look right now. Yeah, look that up. Uh, yeah, they, they've got to be fierce. And you know what? For a young team, I give them a lot of credit for how they've handled it. Uh, Mike Brown has said the right things at the podium. Yep. Um, after the games, if you noticed, he has not been fined. Now, you know, there's that fine line where you do want to fire up your team every once in a while and get a technical. And obviously the game was over in one case. But, um, you know, they've handled it well. So I give them credit. Ben Taylor, Sean Corbin, uh, Robert Hussey, uh, the officials uh, tonight. Yeah, and I think that Mike Brown has been very diplomatic in the postgame press conference. I mean, he hasn't ripped the officials. He hasn't made it personal. He's just said, hey, you know, they, they, they miss calls. And so you're right. It's interesting that we haven't seen anything from the league uh, pertaining to a fine. See, the, here, here's what I feel. If it is validated in the last two-minute report, that an official missed a call, such as the call at the end of the game the other night, I don't think you should find a coach unless the coach goes overboard. You know, if you stay just on this side of the fence, I mm -hmm. think it's okay to make the comments because everyone knows what you know. Everyone knows that Clay Thompson fouled Herter at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. We don't really even have to wait for the last two minute report. So, but once that's validated, then I don't think a coach should be fined for criticizing the officials because they missed the call. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, short of cussing and, you know, personal attacks, that's not staying on that side of the fence. Um, yeah, they shouldn't be fine. But also, we talked about this. The two-minute report shouldn't be public. It, it just should. So There's no it's reason a joke. for it. Yeah. It doesn't serve it, any purpose. It's the, hey, we acknowledge our mistake, but there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, great. We already it. saw it last night. You know, yeah. uh, it was pretty clear. So, Grant, what would you think about, uh, just like in the NFL, every scoring play is reviewed. What about every every buzzer beater oh. is reviewed at the end of the game? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, what happens if it's not a buzzer beater? Like Tyler Hero's shot wasn't a buzzer beater. There was still time left on the clock. So would you have to say... All, how about if we say all plays under five seconds or come up with a number? It wouldn't have to – and I understand the point you're trying to make. But, yeah. Right? So, so we do every play in under 24 seconds or every play under five – you can't do it under 24 because you could have a couple of possessions and the game would go right. on forever. Maybe right. under five seconds? Uh, yeah, five seconds I, I think would be fair. Um, that's usually when most yep. of the – Game winning shots are going to be, especially if the team's going to hold for the last shot. But I mean, it makes sense. Just review it. Okay. But when do you review it? If the if there's a shot that's made and the team then has to either take a timeout or inbound the ball, you can't stop the game. You, sure. you have to wait until there's a natural stop. Either a team calls a timeout or there's a foul or what have you. Then you could go back and review. And then if you find out, let's say on the shot that was made that you made a mistake and the player traveled, then at that point you have to put more time back on the clock right. and inbound the ball with the other team, right? So you understand what I'm saying? You could not just yeah. blow your whistle immediately. I think you'd have to wait until there's a natural stop in the game. Either the team calls a timeout or there's a foul or whatever, or the game ends. Then at that point you can review it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, there's, there's lots of suggestions and tweaking that can be done but I don't think it's too far fetched to look at a situation yeah. or a rule like that because you know it's it's for the game you want to have the right calls at the end of the game and 
not have refs blowing their whistles. Yep. All right, buddy. Appreciate you. Thank you yeah. very much. You got it, Grant. Enjoy the game today. All right. All right, bud. Uh, speaking of the game, I'm going to be on right here on YouTube Live after the game tonight, the Cavaliers and the Kings. We had a really fun time on uh, Monday. Maybe it wasn't fun because the Kings got screwed at the end of the game. But, uh, you know, we, it was good. I'll do it again tonight. Somebody wants to know, am I ready for Christmas? Christmas? Am I ready for Christmas? Are you kidding me? It's not even Thanksgiving yet. Am I ready for Christmas? Who the hell would come up and ask me if I'm ready for Christmas in freaking November before Thanksgiving? And I'm tired of seeing Christmas decorations all over the place when we're not even close to Thanksgiving. Can we please get through Thanksgiving first? I mean, please. Can we at least get to Thanksgiving before I got to see Christmas decorations all over the place? Stop it already. Am I ready for Christmas? Hell no, I'm not ready for Christmas. What about you? Are you ready for Christmas? Just curious. All right. Uh, somebody wants to know if Joe Crawford is still a ref. No, he hasn't been. He's been retired for quite a while. Uh, the Beatles broke up, too. I don't know if you know that or not. The uh, Beatles are no longer together. All right. So what about Easter? Yeah, I am ready for Easter. I got the eggs in the fridge. I got all the painting stuff, decorating. Yeah, I'm good. Absolutely. Uh, somebody wants to know what's the current identity for the Kings team, that they're a losing franchise. That's their identity. Go ask any fan around the country. Tell me something about the Sacramento Kings. Oh, yeah, they suck. That's their identity. I hate to say that, but that's their identity. Thank you. I needed that, LOL. Well, I'm here to please. That's what I do, you know? And tonight, we'll be doing the same thing, all right? Thank you very much, everyone. Really appreciate you. I appreciate uh, Jerry and Ryan, and I'll be back tonight after Kings basketball. So long, everybody.